Thank you. I'm going to come down here for our children's time this morning, and I welcome all of you of all ages, young and old, to be with us this morning. And I'm going to have Sheila in just a minute show you some items, and we're going to take a look at them, and then we're going to talk about what they have in common and why this is an important message about Easter and about Jesus, okay? So we'll identify what we see first. So Sheila, show us the first slide. Now, I bet you recognize what that is, don't you? You can shout it out at home, wherever you are. It is salt and pepper. And it's in a container. Why is it in a container with holes in the top? We know the answer to that, so that you can shake it on your food, okay? Now, let's look at the next item. What's that? You recognize that? The picture's not great, but it is a stick of butter. Okay, a stick of butter. Do you like butter? I love butter. That's one of my problems. I like butter too much. So there's a stick of butter. So we have salt first. Now we have a stick of butter. Let's look at the third item. Oh, what is that? That is chocolate syrup. Okay. And it's in a bowl. I think this is actually homemade chocolate. And uh, it's in a bowl, got the spoon there, and it's sitting there. But that, city, that chocolate sitting there is not made for just drinking down, is it? No, it's not. No, it's not. Let's look at the final item, number four here. What's that? You know what that is because we put it on everything that we have. We have salt, I mean, excuse me, we have ketchup, and we have mustard. What do we put ketchup and mustard on? Well, some people put it on everything. Generally, I put it on my hot dogs, I put it on my hamburgers, and whatever else that I want to make taste better. Now, let's talk a little bit about these four things, what they have in common. I guess you would never open the top of a salt shaker and pour it down your throat, would you? I mean, that would be kind of dumb. Salt isn't made for that, is it? Nor is pepper made for that. So what do you do? You put it on your food. You blend it together with your food, and it makes it taste better, doesn't it? What about that second part, butter? Imagine that you tried to do this, that you had some green beans. I like green beans. I love them. Had some green beans, and so you took a big bite of butter and swallowed it, and then you ate some green beans. Is that why we have butter? No. We have butter to cook with, but we also have butter to put on the certain foods, corn on the cob, for example, green beans, anything we want to add the butter flavor to. We put it on top, the butter melts on it, and we eat it, and it's really good, isn't it? What about the chocolate syrup? Imagine that you take like any chocolate syrup in a bottle, and have you ever done this before and eaten it? I'll have to admit, in desperate times for chocolate, I have. But it didn't work out real well. It never does. Because chocolate syrup is made to be put on something or in something. What would you put it on? Ice cream, right? And just makes the ice cream a new thing. You put it into milk and you stir chocolate syrup into milk. And what do you have? A whole new thing, don't you? You have chocolate milk. You have chocolate milk. Same thing with mustard and ketchup. You put them on. You don't, you don't just... You know, drink down mustard or ketchup. You put, put them on your food to make your food have flavor. Now, why are we talking about things that we add to other things or blend into other things? Because it's important to understand that this is what the resurrection of Christ was about. It was about blending two lives together. Christ's human life. As he is just like us, he, he, he cried, he laughed, he stumbled, he felt pain, he felt anger, all the things we feel Jesus felt. He was just like us, but he was also like God. He was filled with his Father's spirit and his Father's love. And when he rose from the grave, he came to us as fully being God, the Son, and fully being just like us. That's how he was able to take our sins to the cross, even though he was without sin. 
And that's how we receive forgiveness. So we kind of live two lives, but they're two lives blended together. We live the everyday life, but we also live the life of the kingdom of God. That is why we worship. That is why we do mission and service. That is why we help others. And that is why we love as Jesus taught us to love. We live two lives in one life. We live our life for Christ. Would you pray with me, please? And you can say the words after me. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we have more than one life. We have the lives here and our life with you, which is forever. Thank you for giving us your kingdom that in, we can live in and serve you and love you by helping others. Amen. See you next week.